Chat in Microsoft Teams can be found on the left-hand navigation menu. Once you've selected that, you'll see a list of all of the chats that you've currently been participating in. Now, any that are in bold, as you can see here for Megan, mean that there's been activity there that she hasn't yet seen. But if they're not in bold, that means she's all caught up with those. Another indication before she even clicks on chat is the number on the red bubble that's on top of the chat icon, where Megan can see that she has eight chat messages she hasn't yet seen. And as she works through catching up and clicking on those chats, of course, that number goes down, and you can see, as with the chat with Patty, it's no longer bold. In addition to having these one-on-one -on -one chats, like Megan has with Pradeep, Patty, Irvin, and Grady, you can see there's also group chats. So Megan has a chat here with Adele and Joanna. To create a group chat, you can start one of two ways. It could be from an existing group chat or one-on-one -on -one chat, just by opening the chat, going to the upper right-hand corner, and clicking on the View and Add Participants button. When you do this, you just click on Add People. And let's say we wanted to add Nestor to this chat. We type in his name, select him, choose whether or not Nestor should get all chat history, no chat history, or a certain number of days of chat history. So we'll say all chat history and add. And notice as we add additional people to a group chat, the name starts to get a little long. In fact, if I look on the left-hand side, I can see I have a chat with Alex, Christy, Irvin, and three more people. So if I look at that chat, I still see the plus three at the top, but I can see everybody who's in that chat by clicking on the same button we used to view and add participants before. Now, because that name's really not that clear and I may work with this group of six people for a very specific thing, I probably wanna rename the group. So to rename a group chat, just click on the pencil next to the name. And then I might call this Project ABC and save. And maybe we're just working on a very short term project together but now this is a more clear name. Now, because that might be important in something I'm working on regularly, I may also wanna pin that chat. So even if there's not recent activity in the chat, it'll always be at the top. So to pin a chat, we use the ellipsis on the chat name, choose pin, and now we can see it up at the top. And as you start pinning more and more chats, you can rearrange those in your pinned section by simply dragging and dropping. Now I mentioned we could add someone to an existing chat by going to the view and add participants button for an existing chat, but you can also start from scratch. And to start from scratch, we click on this new chat button at the top of the left panel. And then we just start typing names. So let's say I want a group chat with Diego and Joni. Okay, so I've got them in there and the chat's not quite finished. I still need to send a message for it to be real. So I'm gonna go ahead and click in the message box and say hello, and I send that. And now it's a legitimate chat, meaning that Diego and Joni got a, an indication of a new message, and they can come here and participate in this uh, three-person chat with me as well. And then something else we can do is add external people into the mix. I could have a chat with an external person, such as Nate, who works at Centric, by putting in his full email address, choosing search for that address externally, then it finds that person, I click on their name, and once again, I simply send a message to make it official. And now Nate gets a message, and I can see his status, if his organization allows that, and we can have a back and forth, even though we work at different companies. And you can use external people in group chats as well, whereas if I want to include Diego in that chat with Nate, I type in Diego, and then I'll put in Nate's email address again, but since I'm already chatting with him, he shows up. So I'll just click on his name, and one more time, I'll say hello. All right, so whether internal or external, you can mix and match and have one-on-ones or group chats using Microsoft Teams. Now, at the bottom of every chat, let's go to this chat with Diego and Joni. Notice I've got a number of options. I can format my text by using the A with a pencil on it. I can make bold, italic, underline. I can even insert tables if I want to. So you can get pretty dynamic there. And you can also mark messages as important or urgent. Now, urgent is only available for chat, so when we get to the channel section, you won't see that as an option. But if you mark a message as important, it gives a little visual indicator with a red exclamation point on the message itself, and it also shows a red exclamation point in the uh, chat panel over here. So you'll be able to see visually that you've missed an important message. 
Now urgent does the same thing, but it's a bell instead of an exclamation point. And as you can see here, recipients are gonna be notified every two minutes for 20 minutes. So in addition to the visual indicator on the message and in the chat panel, if you mark it as urgent, the activity bubble for all recipients will also have an activity notification every two minutes for 20 minutes until that message is viewed. Okay, so let's mark this one as urgent and we'll send it, uh, we'll just say hello again. There we go. And now I can see the bell, I can see the word urgent and Diego and Joni will see a bell here before they've read the message and they'll have an activity notification. All right, now we can also attach files, and it's important to note that any files that you attach through a chat message, whether it's a group chat or a one-on-one -on -one chat, are going to be stored in OneDrive. So think back to everything you learned about OneDrive, and uh, any file that you upload is going to go straight to your OneDrive and automatically be shared with Diego and Joni. So let's send them a file. All right, now notice it's gonna give Diego and Joni access to edit this file. Now, if I don't want that to be the case, I can drop that down. And then this should look kind of familiar to what you learned in OneDrive and SharePoint, where we can change the link type. So if I don't want Joni and Diego to share that link with anyone else, I might say only the people in this chat can edit. Or maybe I just want them to view and I wanna uncheck that box. So be sure to make the appropriate selection, choose apply, and then just verify that it says what you intended to say before you send that file. Okay, and then I'm gonna say, please review this deck. And now it's sent. And any files that you send back and forth, so if Diego and Joni sent files back as well, those are all gonna be collected on the files tab that we share in this chat. So easy access to everything so we don't have to scroll up and down to find old messages. All right, now the next three are kind of similar. They allow us to have a little bit of fun at work and be creative and express ourselves better. And those are emojis, GIFs, and stickers. So if you wanna add a little extra something to a message, you can use all three of those. Some of those are customizable. So notice there's a meme category with a pencil on it. You can choose something and give it your own caption. Okay, and then also if I want to schedule a meeting, let's say Diego, Joni, and I have been talking and it's clear that we need to discuss something in real time, I might use the schedule a meeting option. And then notice as soon as I do that, it pre-populates whoever I was chatting with in the invite line. So I'll just call this a touch base. We'll choose my date and time, whether or not it repeats, and I'll go ahead and send. And anything that I send through Teams as a meeting request is the same as sending through Outlook where they're gonna get an email, they can accept or decline the event, and it shows up on their Outlook calendar, but also inside of Teams because the Teams calendar is your Outlook calendar. Okay, so there's that touch base. All right, so just a couple more things here. At the very top of any chat, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or whether it's a group chat, you'll see this option to add a tab. So if you click on that, you can extend the tools that are built into your chat. Let's say you have a, an Excel workbook or you have a PDF document that you use as a procedure with this group of people. You can pin it to the top of your chat so you all have easy access to it at any one time. So for example, if I wanted to pin a website inside this chat for Diego, Joni, and I to have easy access to, I choose the website app. I'm gonna call it Nate the Trainer and the URL is natethetrainer.com and I'll click save. So now in addition to having our chat and now that message about that new tab, the files which is anything that we've been attaching and sending back and forth and then Nate the Trainer which is just a website but we get to use that website inside of Microsoft Teams. So this is a good demonstration of we're really creating a one-stop shop by using Microsoft Teams. It's our single pane of glass where we can pretty much add anything to our existing communication channels, whether those are chats or channels, which you'll learn about here in just a little bit. All right, so we'll learn more about things that you can add uh, when we get into channels, but just keep in mind that chat is no longer just chat. We can absolutely integrate additional tools and have easy access to those. 
So down at the bottom, we're not going to go through all the options here, but you can uh, use additional apps inside of the message that you send to someone. And just know that if you're not seeing what you're looking for, you can use the ellipsis to look for even more apps that you can use inside of this chat. For example, you may click on more apps and then just get a better idea of what's possible. Maybe it's forms, maybe you want to send the weather, or you can even find something like Starbucks to send somebody a $5 uh, a gift card to say thank you for something. So all kinds of apps you can add inside of chats. The last thing we'll cover here in the chat section is just your abilities for each chat that you have in your thread. We already know that we can pin, but let's say you're part of a large group chat that's getting a lot of activity, but it's not really important to your work. For that, you can use the ellipsis and you can leave a group chat at any time. So they'll keep chatting without you, but you won't see activity from it anymore and won't have to be a part of it. Or if you want to stay a part of it, just mute the chat. And that makes sure that you're not going to get any notifications about it. And you'd have to come into Teams and see the bold chat to know that something had happened. So you can mute it. And then you can also hide it. Let's say I don't want to see that chat anymore with Diego, Isaiah, Joni, plus three. I can hide it. And then if there's additional activity, it will show back up. So just keep that in mind. Mute it if you don't want notifications, hide it if it's pretty much done with and you don't need to use it anymore, and leave it if you'll never need it again. So that's chat inside of Teams. In the next lesson, you'll learn about Teams versus channels.